Hello, I'm Fiona and here at the start of our summer holidays we've got a four-part message series called Small Things, Big Difference. We've all experienced so much change over the last few months and maybe now we have an opportunity to reflect a bit, maybe review the changes that we want to keep and the areas of our lives we'd rather change. But here's the thing, we don't always have to make big changes. In fact, the key thought for this message is that often the small things, perhaps that no one else sees, they result in the big changes that maybe everyone wants. Small things can lead to big differences. There's a really wonderful verse in Zechariah chapter 4 that I'd love us to look at and then I'd like to tell you where we're going to go in this message series and then I'd like to give you one very specific, a uh, very direct, very focused assignment. One small thing that we really believe can make a big difference in your life. So during the time when Zechariah was writing, the temple was still destroyed um, the work to rebuild it had stalled and although a guy called Zerubbabel had led a remnant of people back to Jerusalem, back to Israel, most of God's people were still in captivity. So it was a low point for them. And then God spoke to Zerubbabel and said, I'm going to enable you to rebuild build the temple. So through Zechariah, God said, it's not by force, it's not by strength. But by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's army. You see, we can try to change. We can try in our own power. I can make some ooh, incremental improvements in my own power. But if we tap into a higher power we, than, than we possess by ourselves, if we dig deep into this greater power of the Holy Spirit, then it's by God's power, by his spirit, not by our effort, not by our might, not by our power, but it's by God's spirit, God can transform you and me. And I, I really hope this verse encourages you. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. We've got to start somewhere, and God rejoices to see us being faithful, even with the small things. One of the challenges we face in life, to use a cinematic illustration, is that when we look at other people, we see their highlight reel, but we know all of our behind the scenes bloopers. We can end up comparing their outsides with our insides, and that can lead to us feeling intimidated or downhearted. And we can hear of these amazing people in the Bible, like David. Look at David, he was a man after God's own heart. He took down Goliath. I want to be able to take down my giants. That's David's highlight reel though. And we can easily forget that David was faithful for years out on the hills, tending his sheep. You know, whenever a wild animal would come to attack his flock, he would chase it off or kill it to protect his sheep. And what was happening there? Well, he was being trained on the inside. He was learning to be faithful with the small things like a flock of sheep so that God could entrust him with the bigger things like defeating an enemy giant, like a sparkling army career, like kingship of a whole country. It's so often the small things that no one else sees that result in the big things that everyone wants. We are going to focus on three important areas over the next few weeks. We're going to focus on our thoughts, our words and our habits. Because our thoughts become words, our words become actions, our actions become habits and our habits create our destiny. So next week Judith's going to talk about our thoughts because as a person thinks in their heart, so they become. And then David's going to look at some small changes we can make with the words that we use because there is the power of life and death in our words. And finally, we're going to look at our habits because we become what we repeatedly do. By making some small changes in the way we think, speak and behave, we can enjoy big, positive differences in our lives, in our relationships with others and in our relationship with God. 
That is a win, win, win. David was known as a man after God's own heart. And do you know what the one thing was that he wanted above everything else? David said, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the one thing I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That was David's one thing. And if the one thing that you desire is to be in the presence of God, then guess what? You'd be a man or woman after God's own heart. You see, if you study the phrase one thing in the Bible, you can find it popping up all over the place. The Apostle Paul, a mega apostle, grew the early church, but all this horrendous stuff happened in his life. Before he followed Jesus, he persecuted Jesus' followers and he did some really horrible, shameful things, things that could have crippled his conscience. And life didn't get suddenly amazingly better for him after he started following Jesus. He was beaten, shipwrecked, left for dead, snake bitten, he was hungry, he was stoned many times, and I don't mean in the recreational way. Paul endured massive pain. Pain from what he'd done to others and then through what others did to him. But do you know what he said? He said, this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining on to what is ahead. It's like Paul was saying, I'm not going to let my past define my future. So the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let go of that. I'm going to take my next step forward and the next because God has this one thing for me to focus on. And when we focus on that one thing from God, God can do amazing things in our life. Jesus visited the home of Mary and Martha, and Mary was enjoying being with Jesus, spending time with him, but Martha was freaking out. Jesus looked at her, her and he said, Martha, you're upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary, who was sitting at the feet of Jesus, which means she had taken up the posture of a disciple. She had positioned herself to learn from Jesus, to follow hard after him. Whereas Martha was consumed with serving, which isn't bad or wrong, but when serving is at the expense of spending time with God, then we've got our priorities wrong. Jesus said only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it won't be taken away from her. Jesus encountered a very wealthy, successful young man, and this guy wanted to follow Jesus, but his problem was that his identity and value and status was all tied up in his material possessions. And so Jesus said, you only lack one thing, only one thing, just one thing. You get this right, and you can help to change the world. Go sell your possessions, give all that stuff away, don't let it weigh you down and then come follow me. But you know what happened? The guy went away sad because he was will unwilling to do the one thing that could make the biggest difference in his life. And so here's our assignment and it's very simple, very focused, very direct and very doable. Ask God for one specific word that will define your life that will direct your life over the next few months. Just ask God for one word and then when you get that one word you can um, put it into a search engine, put it into Google and just type whatever that word is, rest in the Bible, rest in the Bible and it will come up with all the verses that relate to that one word. And you see, the reason we're going to ask God for this one word is because it's not by our might, not by our power, but by God's spirit that he'll enable us to move forward. And we, we just can't maybe imagine how different life can be when we focus on that one God-breathed word that can help direct our decisions and guide our life. That word for you might be simplify or strengthen or rebuild. Mine is be still, and that's not two words, it's just one word. Shush, shush, be still. So what's your one word? You know, pray and seek God for that one word. And, and when you hear and believe that God has spoken to you, has shared your one word with you, that will give you a confidence in your innermost being because you've heard from God. And if you hear from God, you can, you know, about that, you can hear from God about something else and suddenly you've got this spiritual momentum 
you've got a word and you've got a verse. And when you've picked that one verse, write it in lipstick on your mirror, get it tattooed on your face, maybe not, uh, put it in a frame and put it somewhere where you'll see it all the time. And then go live and be faithful and pray to God about that one word and that one verse and how God wants that to impact your life, to direct and guide you. And you know, after a while, someone might say to you, what has happened to you? It must be something massive and big and huge and life changing. What happened in your life? And you'll say, you know what? It wasn't anything big. God put one small thing in front of me and I just decided to focus on that and be faithful with that one thing. God gave me one word and it has made a big difference in my life. Because you know what God loves? God loves when we are faithful with the small things. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in the small things, so I can trust you with the bigger things. So God, we pray that you would help us to be faithful, even when nobody's looking, to be faithful in the details, to be faithful with what you put in front of us. God, we want to be faithful with the small things so that you would trust us with even bigger. God, I pray that you would give us words that would stretch us, direct us, focus us on the things that matter most to you. And God, help us to live a very focused life out of the God-breathed, spirit-empowered direction that you will give us with this one word. And Lord, by faith, we thank you that you can see the end before we see the beginning. And we will not despise the day of small beginnings because we, we know, God, that you rejoice to see the work begin. Amen. So have fun. Talk to God, ask him what that one word is for your life and then do that search. Find a verse that speaks to your heart and just hang on to it, focus in on it and come back next week to hear how we should be thinking about our thoughts.